Masha Korpacheva is a California-based realtor and a member of the National Association of Realtors in Los Angeles. She's an advocate for selling and buying homes with soul and practicing mindfulness in real estate. With master's degrees in spiritual psychology and linguistics, Masha brings all of her skills to work with her clients. An intuit and empath, she has touched many lives with her outstanding ability to see beyond the visible and helping to come to better understanding of issues and their resolutions. An adventurous world traveler, from climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania to exploring the Galapagos Islands, Masha has a particular passion for the City of Angels. Having landed in this paradise and adopted it as her home, she's been sharing old Hollywood stories since 2007. This podcast is an invitation to feel and experience the souls of famous old Hollywood homes and to have an in-depth journey to the areas where they're located through interviews with longtime residents. Either you're a fan of old Hollywood in Los Angeles, planning to have a vacation, or an even bigger step, considering a certain area for your future home. This is your opportunity to receive valuable information and insightful advice you won't find anywhere else. In the mood for California, feel the soul of old Hollywood. Hello, hello, and welcome to my podcast. Are you in the mood for California? Today, we'll explore the portal of the folded wings, followed by an interview with an outstanding jazz pianist and composer, Vardan of Sipan, who lives in Burbank, and he will share his creative feel of the city with us. And now, are you ready to feel the soul of the portal of the folded wings? A lot of people flying in and out of Bob Hope Airport in Burbank probably have never traveled a very short distance to Valhalla Memorial Park to see the portal of the folded wings which was constructed in 1924 as the Valhalla Memorial Rotunda, six years before the airport was built. The 75-foot-tall portal, made of marble mosaic and adorned with sculpted figures, is an impressive quadruple arch with a dome on top. It represents Mission Spanish colonial revival architecture and Chiriguresque or ultra-baroque decorative style. Italian sculptor Federico Giorgi is buried only a few feet away from it, as if still admiring from the other side one of his most prominent works. When it was first built, the rotunda served as the entrance to Valhalla Memorial Park and was the site of musical concerts and other cemetery social events. In 1930, with the opening of United Airport, which is now called Bob Hope Airport, across the street, the gatherings and music had to end, as the roaring plane sounds were not a compatible harmony. In 1937, park employee and aviation enthusiast James Gillette started a movement to create a shrine to aviation honoring the pioneers of flight. The growing aviation industry, including Lockheed Aircraft and the proximity of Burbank Airport, made the rotunda a perfect site for the purpose. Thus, on December 17, 1953, which was the 50th anniversary of powered flight, the rotunda was rechristened the Portal of the Folded Wings and dedicated as a shrine to aviation. Now it shelters the remains of 13 pioneers of aviation, including Mathilde Mossand, who in 1911 became the second licensed female pilot in the United States, Carl Squire, the world's greatest airplane salesman, according to his plaque, Roy Nabenschuer, who flew America's first dirigible, and Hilder Smith, the first lady pilot to fly an airplane out of the bean patch that later became the LA International Airport. 
In 1998, the portal of the folded wings was listed on the National Registry of Historic Places. In 2007, the portal was joined by a 21-foot-long replica of the 122-feet real-length space shuttle to pay tribute to the crews of the two disastrous shuttle missions. On one side of the shuttle, you can read the name Challenger, and on the other side, Columbia. The space shuttle model is maintaining the rotundus theme of rebirth and repurposing, as it was a former Hollywood movie prop used in 2003's sci-fi film The Core, where it played the space shuttle Endeavor. Spiritually, an arch is a timeless and powerful symbol of renewal. It carries a transcendental value, signifying the opening to new perspectives, and being able to see on the other side. As the embodiment of strength and support, arches prompt the elevation of spirit and mind towards higher ideals. An arch is a portal that is always open for you. If you can see it with your mind, it will inspire you to cross over and to step into a revelation that is waiting to be discovered. Regardless of where you are, everything you ever need is within you at all times. Just unfold your wings and let yourself fly. And here we are. Welcome to Burbank. I'm so thrilled to have Vardan Ovsipan here with me. Vardan is an incredible jazz pianist and composer. You can follow Vardan on social media or visit his website www.vardanofsipan.com. To experience Vardan's performance is to immerse yourself into a meditative state and start breathing in unison with the melody, while every single thought in your head would step aside to open up a space to your higher self. Vardan is going to share with us what it feels like to live and create in Burbank. Hello, Vardan. Hi, Masha. I was so looking forward to our conversation, and I'm so thrilled to have you here with me to talk about the area which is not widely known to people who don't live in California, and yet it is such an important place for filmmakers, as a lot of film studios are located here, including Warner Brothers. Right. So uh, tell me, Vardan, uh, why did you choose uh, to live in Burbank? Well, the area... Um where we are is not deep Burbank. This is East Burbank, which is right next to Glendale. Mm -hmm. And I was in Glendale before, which, as we know, has established itself uh, for whatever it is, heavily populated by Armenians, uh, with lots of Armenian food, clean, safe. Um, Burbank, as you mentioned, has all of those studios, and that's what mostly makes Burbank the city that it is, with the movie industry and some recording studios for, for music as well. But East Burbank, where I am, is uh, just the very beginning of this city. And being here, it almost feels like you're in a state of limbo. It's not Burbank yet, and it's not Glendale anymore. Mm -hmm. It's almost just this little border between the two cities. And it has that kind of... Um, neutral uh, feeling about it which uh, i can compare to it actually feels like when i'm in the airport huh. which i actually love being in the airport because as soon as i step into the airport of one city i feel like i've already departed the city but i still haven't departed so that's th that feeling of uh, being in limbo uh, you're neither there or in the, or in a new place, you're kind of in between. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit mysterious. And this area feels like this. It's not deep Burbank, not Glendale anymore. It's some kind of a, a little limbo area. Hmm. And I love that because it puts you in this kind of a, for, for a creative person, it's, it's interesting being in that, in that space. It puts you um, 
and this very um it's a bit unsettling and gets you always thinking and fantasizing and all of that wow very interesting and now i can see how it actually also you know almost like becomes a part of your character because you know being a jazz pianist you have to improvise a lot and you never know what comes next and there must be some kind of a thrill about it oh absolutely nothing is really concrete you know mm -hmm. when you are uh, let's say in the center of burbank with all of the studios and everything it's kind of an established place you know what it is and that's that's the feeling but here it's interesting but i have to also add this is more of a, a different topic uh, burbank this particular area is because it's next to griffith park nature is really stunning i go out of this this house and it's immediately a very attractive area for walking lots of trees parks so that part is quite quite nice right so you can have you know your time and space uh, to contemplate and sort of like being with yourself you know in your creative mode mm -hmm. very very interesting wow i never ever thought of burbank in such a way and What an interesting um, description you brought forward. Yeah, it's personal, right? It's uh, every, every um, as you're interviewing different people, I'm sure you've heard all sorts of different opinions about their placement, their way of feeling in their space. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. So would you say that living in Burbank um, is conducive to your lifestyle? Because it is definitely conducive to your you know, a uh, creative um, spirit because it keeps you in this um, moment of, you know, limbo and you don't know what happens next and you're on your tiptoes almost and preparing for a new journey and you don't know where and how it will be happening. But as far as your lifestyle, uh, is Burbank conducive to that? Yes, but as we also know for, for creative people, it's um, it's only a matter of finding that space in, in their heads. As um, wherever you are, you you create that space in your head to to create. Whether you live with five roommates in a very unattractive neighborhood, or if you live somewhere like Burbank, which is so surrounded by nature. So yeah, I would say that part is quite quite personal, and this is also connected to how we construct our spaces where we live for me it's quite important that the living space is also designed in a way that can be very inspiring um, and so this the, i don't know if this is one of your next questions should i talk about this or no uh, yes exactly i was going to ask you like uh, so how Uh, would you design your living space so that it would be inspiring to you? It would be great if you could elaborate on that. Well, Los Angeles as a city, um, for someone like me, is not necessarily the perfect city to be in, which opens a different question. What is really a perfect city or perfect mm -hmm. living uh, environment? Uh, probably it doesn't exist. But... For my nature, LA, and I'm, I don't want to sound that I dislike LA. I actually love being in this city, but for some other reasons, and one of them I should probably mention immediately so it becomes clear for, for the listeners, um, is that I don't really think of LA as culturally very um, motivating, let me put it this way. Since I'm used to New York, if we're talking about U.S., or European cities that are breathing culture every day. Um, like you go, let's say, to the center of Brussels, and it's all museums, and that's and performing spaces, and that's what the center of Brussels is. Um, we have to face the fact that, after all, this this city is very much driven by materialistic um, things. And therefore, me being out on the streets and doing whatever I do, recording sessions, performing, meeting friends, it's not always that I come back to my own space in a very inspired 
state. Sometimes it's lovely and with good interactions. Some other times um, it just hits me again how um, disappointed I get by the forces that drive this city. Let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. So therefore, coming back to this place, I have to make sure that my own space, which is very little here, um, I have a studio with a small attic, which was is transformed to a bedroom. I have uh, this grand piano here that takes one quarter of the whole space. But I decided to make this, first of all, design-wise, um, kind of um, industrial farmhouse style. And then with the books and posters and, and the speakers that I have and the plants, just made it so that everywhere that my eye my eye catches is going to be quite inspiring loving the space so therefore uh, so I'm making that connection again once I'm outside walking on the streets if it's not really an inspiring day I know that coming back to this space is going to be really lovely so I always look forward to returning home and that inspires me to create beautiful that's, that's very beautiful and um I understand exactly what you mean um, about Los Angeles as, uh, as a city in general, not being very culturally uh, inspiring. But also, I think you living in the city, um, you have to bring it forward. And whatever you're bringing forward is what's inside of you. And I think, therefore, role, your role in this city is much bigger then it would be in a place that would be, you know, completely inspiring. Like, you know, you mentioned Brussels or New York, you know, where there is art and culture, you know, surrounding you. But here, because, you know, your choice uh, to live in the city. True. You know, we still need culture, you know, and you bring it forward. Oh, no, absolutely. And yeah, yeah. I didn't want to uh, sound as if we're in, in, in a culturally dead place a lot is happening here and this is a large city but it's interesting that you are mentioning that Masha just because the people that I interact with uh, musicians and artists most of them are feeling that way which is that it's basically up to us to make some kind of a change and that's one of the reasons that LA has very brave experimental movements and I see this all the time mm -hmm. And at the moment, also me, me being part of CalArts uh, University's faculty, this is what I see uh, at this university as well with exchange of all the arts, uh, collaboration between different art forms, musicians with dancers, painters with writers, and this and that. It's quite experimental, uh, which obviously is not always 100% success, but there is always the that kind of a uh, driving element there. And so, yeah, completely agreeing with you. Um, the artists are quite brave with experimental um, formations. For yes, sure. yes. And I, I can see that as well. And I think this bravery that any artist should have within themselves is the moving force for arts and culture. And when you know that you have to do it because if you don't do it, nobody else will. And as we were talking like um, in other places, art, you know, has already been like taken care of, right? It all surrounds you and everything is there. But art has to be everywhere because it is a part of human soul. And these brave experimental movements I think they would not be able to exist um, in other places because there would not be the challenge for them, you know, to go through and, um, you know, to be created. So it's uh, it's actually, as I'm speaking to you, thinking that it is actually a, a wonderful, wonderful place to create. And we know that art is usually born kind of of the ashes, of some pain, of some struggle, some challenges. And, and that exactly as you were describing, Los Angeles being the place very materialistic, and it is very expensive also to live here. 
but for artistic people to come forward and bring it to the people because they just, you know, cannot help it because it's who they are. This is absolutely inspiring to me. And this bravery is, you know, what actually keeps the city being alive. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. Thank you for sharing this. Um, you know, it's it's actually very touching. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, you said that, you know, you designed your home in an industrial uh, style. You know, it's very practical and uh, comfortable for you. So what is your... Um, what is the heart of your home? What would you say is the heart of your home? So when you come home and you look for inspiration, so what inspires you there? Mm, I haven't thought about this. And probably it's going to be different objects, um, different days. It would be um, some days it would be actually the piano itself. Some other days it might be the plants, uh, wherever my attention goes. Some other days it would be the books or my minimal kitchen setup where I can't really do an elaborate cooking. And because of that, I will need to be very creative in that department as well. One small burner uh, for me to be able to create something. But then, you know, with, as you know, with limitations, you try to achieve the best results. Then you go for one small dish only but you put all of your heart there and same goes for every other aspect in this place um, because it's a very small space where i live you kind of have to be really smart with your decisions even about placing the objects where where one uh, has to be uh, resting or exercising or practicing or having a stationery for the computer or reading a book. All things need to be designed to, to a perfection, really. Otherwise, small space won't work. And I, I even managed to have a screen that's coming from the ceiling. So I just open it from the ceiling. I have a, a little projector. I gather a few friends from time to time for us to watch some interesting movies that could be inspiring uh, and opening for discussions. So yeah, to answer on your question, Masha, it's um, uh, that I actually don't have one particular uh, thing that I can mention that that's the heart. I think it varies different things, different days. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Well, and people who know your music, people who come to your performances, they can definitely appreciate, um, you know, this force that you bring forward. And being at your concert is actually a, quite an otherworldly experience. And now that you shared with all of us how you approach this, you know, where you live and how you feel Maybe some people will get a glimpse into your creative mind because what you bring forward when you're out there in the world and the sounds that you create for people to hear, I mean, they have an absolutely incredible power and they come Thanks. from this yeah. quiet place, you know, in your heart and in your mind. And, and that, then you let it kind of come out of you, you know, with force and with vibrant energy and with a lot of feeling, which is an absolutely true creation. And everybody who is in touch with your music can sense that. Yeah. And as you've mentioned, it's, it's always nice to have a reference where things come from. Um, even though music is so abstract, it exists in a way, on its own, um, it can be enjoyed without us knowing who the composer is. But I can reference this and you will know just because I know you watched that movie, Tar, mm -hmm. which is in the theaters. And one of the things that um, the main character, played by Kate Blanchett, um, is mentioning is that it's important to understand where this composition is coming from. What was the composer feeling as as they were composing this work. So yeah, right. reference, references are always nice. Yes, 
Yes, and now that you have explained very elaborately how, you know, living in limbo and in some way it makes you feel maybe um, living on the edge and having the spontaneity and having to imp improvise all the time and approaching your musical um, compositions and approaching your performances um, in the same way, which also takes actually a lot of hard, hard work because you're you know, a very busy um, musician. This is um, something that I would say make our city, Los Angeles in general, better. And, you know, what you do with your work, you know, makes it more beautiful with more soul. So thank you so much for everything you do for the city. Yeah. Thank you, Vardan. And uh, I really appreciate um, our conversation today. And uh, it felt, you know, as if, you know, we looked into, you know, the world of a creative mind, which is, um, yeah, which is a very, very, very special experience. And uh, in these minds and hearts like yours, they um, do exist in our city. And they live in Burbank because that's mm -hmm. the right place <laughs> but you know as i mentioned earlier it could be burbank it could be any other place if if for some reason i was i don't know in the let's say eagle rock or silver lake and they all have different characters we would any artist or any anyone for that matter would adapt and find some kind of a creative little bubble yes yes a little bubble in order to come forward with brief experimental movement in the art. Yes, very true. Well, thank you so much, Vardan, for our conversation. And uh, My pleasure. Thanks for making time. Of course. Thank you so much, Vardan. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed experiencing the portal of the folded wings and getting a creative feel of Burbank with our special guest, Vardan of Sipan. Please press the like button, follow and share your feedback for the podcast. Your time and support are greatly appreciated. Next time, we are traveling to Fairfax Beverly area and we'll get a historic taste of Farmer's Market. See you there! In the mood for California, feel the soul of old Hollywood 